Welcome to Empower Your Pattern with President James Hendrick, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, adversity educator, and success confidence and thrive coach. He'll teach you the patterns of success set forth by the Word of God. So, if you're ready to join, get ready and enjoy the way to empower yourself. Come on, folks. Let's join together. Let's fly. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Pattern Realm to the Wealth Council. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will take your seats. This episode is PE83. You'll never know. Over to you, Presley Swaggerty. My daughter was buying a car from, uh, uh, she drove by and there was a used car dealership and she saw a little three series BMW and she liked it and she called and said, dad, would you come, would you come negotiate with this guy? So I show up and uh, the sales guy is a guy named Mark Dean and Mark Dean is selling Cerebeth the car and we negotiate and worked out a deal. And, you know, I'd had a bad morning and hadn't gone real well that day. And, you know, I started to leave and I, it, it hit me, you know, maybe I should say something to him. So I, I just said, Hey, do you look at other ways to make money? And he said, well, yeah. I said, have you had lunch? He goes, no. I said, let's meet at Jason's Deli. So I met Mark Dean at Jason's Deli. Showed Mark Dean a presentation, scribbled it out on a napkin or something. I mean, it, it wasn't a very professional presentation, but for whatever reason, he decides to join my business. Now, the reason I tell you that is I'd had a bad morning and I I, I really didn't want to say anything to Mark. I really didn't feel like showing a plan that day. It just wasn't going well, but I did. Guys, Mark Dean, that leg of my organization, put in 110,000 IBOs. That one leg. And that was a guy that I almost didn't say anything to that day. Now, understand this, guys. Here, here, everybody look up here because if you catch anything, this thought might make you some money. Every time I start to walk past somebody today and I don't really feel like saying something, this thought crosses my mind and I think, am I walking past a fortune? Because Dino is about as average looking as I am. He wasn't anything special. I had no idea that he would turn out to be a stud muffin, but he did. And that one leg has changed mine and Jeannie's lives. So again, now, if I don't feel good one day and I, I, I walk by somebody, I'll usually turn around because that thought hits my mind that am I walking past a fortune? Now, we can put that slide up if you would, guys. Uh, you know, here's here's the ACN system and Mr. Stavanovsky and some of the other founders. We've been talking, Patrick and Mike, and we've been saying that we got to do a few things a little bit different, kind of go back to the future, if you will. I'm going to start talking about peaking. Now, that's kind of what I did with Mark Dean. I, I said something to him. In other words, I opened my mouth. Guys, the biggest key is just say something. Would everybody agree with that? Would you leaders, just whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, say something? Because there's an old saying, and it's the truth. You can't say the right thing to the wrong one or the wrong thing to the right one. I mean, that's just that really works. That really applies, guys. So say something. If people are looking, you don't have to be real eloquent. Now, I'm going to give you three things that I do, three different ways that I approach this business. One, if it's a good friend of mine, I mean, we're buddies, or it's a close relative, I'll just call them up and go, hey, I found a way we can work together and make some serious money. There's a Zoom at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Jump on it. I mean, I just almost tell them. You know, it's a buddy of mine. I mean, it's a good friend. It's a, a close family member. We all have a few people like that in our life, right, that we can just almost call them up and say, hey, I found a way we can make some serious money together. Jump on this Zoom at 7 o'clock. That, that's one approach I take if it's somebody real close to me. Now, if it's somebody that I know but we're not buddies, then my approach is a little bit different. You know, I'll call them up and I'll go, hey, how's the family? How's the dog? For about 30 seconds, maybe a minute. And then, guys, I think this is key. I'll always turn the conversation on this statement. I'll say, listen, this is a business call. Do you look at other ways to make money? Do you see what I'm doing, guys? I get in there and I talk for a minute about family and stuff that I can talk about in literally a minute. But then I'll tell them that, hey, this is a business call. Do you look at other ways to make money? 
Oh, you do? Hey, listen, there's a Zoom tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. I want you on it. Can I put you down? All right? That's my second approach. Now, the one I've started using lately some is this, is that with impact, the savings is so phenomenal. If I think it's somebody that I might could help out with impact and also maybe recruit them in the process, I'll just say, what do you do for health care? Oh, really? Do you mind me asking how much you pay? And then I got this from Patrick. I mean, I love this. He goes, you know, why do you pay so much? Guys, my, my personal testimony on that is I was paying $1,500 with Blue Cross, and I'm now paying 426 with Impact for me for better coverage. I mean, it's amazing. I love it. I've used it a couple of times, worked seamlessly. But I'll ask them, I'll say, why are you paying that much? Can I give you a quick quote? And, guys, if you haven't done it, you can do an Impact quote on your phone in, like, 15 seconds. Have you all figured that out? I'll give them a quote. Give them a quote as quick as you can because that's what's going to catch their attention, guys. I promise you the first time I scrolled down and saw 426, it caught my attention because I was paying $1,500 a month. Give them that quote and then see where that leads you from there, guys. But, you know, if I'm talking to them about being an impact uh, uh, customer, then somewhere along the line I'll throw out there, hey, do you realize you can make some money doing this too if you want to look at it? But, guys, that, that's kind of my three approaches. If it's a good buddy, I just almost tell them to get on the Zoom with me. If it's somebody that I, I just know uh, but I'm not buddies with, then I'll just uh, say, hey, this is a business call. Got a quick question for you. Do you look at other ways to make money? And then I use the Zoom approach. Now, you say, well, what about if it's somebody that you – it's the cashier, it's the waiter, or it's the whoever. If it's somebody like that, if i got a, a waiter or a waitress that has a good personality – I'll, I'll talk to them a little bit for a little bit because I know I'm going to be sitting there for 30 minutes or so. So I'll try to develop a little bit of a relationship. I always think that's the best way to do it if you can. And, you know, at some point in time, I'll say, you know, you've got an amazing personality. My, my company's expanding in this area. Do you look at other ways to make money? I like the part where I say my company's expanding in this area, which is absolutely a true statement. I'll expand anywhere, won't you? You know, uh, my company's expanding in this area. Do you look at other ways to make money? Really? Now, here's what I'll do. I always carry business cards with me, and I'll hand them a card, and then I'll say, hey, what's your number? Guys, I'm telling you, the big key to that secret is I give them mine so they feel a little bit obligated to return the favor, and then I'll say, what's your number? And I put it in my phone. Because even if they're interested on that spot, life gets in the way. Three days later, they don't even remember who I am. But if I've got their number, then I call them up and I go, hey, I'm the guy that was asking you, telling you my company's expanding, or, you know, I'd like to visit with you, and I go from there. Guys, we've got to get to doing that. The whole key, and I'm going to say it again, you might be walking past a fortune and you not even know it. We've got to understand that, guys. You never know who's going to be the stud or the stud ad in this business. Nobody has ACN stamped on their forehead, huh? I mean, we just don't know who's going to do it. We've got to get in the habit of talking to everybody. All right, number two, PBZs. Now, here's where I'm going to start changing just a little bit. Now, do I? my team, we do six scheduled PBZs, business presentations on Zooms, six a week. So do I believe in Zooms? Absolutely. Are Zooms going away? Never going away. They're here to stay, guys, and I love it. That's great. But I think we've got to add that belly-to-belly, -belly, that eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball aspect to our business. Now, when I call in talking to somebody on the phone, if it's somebody that I'm a half a mile from, I may say, hey, can you meet me at Starbucks? Or, hey, after work, why don't you run by my house? And if you don't feel comfortable doing the business presentation yourself, play them a, a, a video of the business presentation. My gosh, we got we got a bunch of good videos that you can play, people. If you feel like doing it yourself, my gosh, do it. And you say, well, I'm not that good. Hey, you don't want to be too good. If you look too polished, they'll think you they'll never be able to do what you're doing. But if you kind of screw it up a little bit and stammer and stutter a little bit, they're thinking, my gosh, if Ryan's making money at this, then I'm going to kill it, you know? I mean... You know, that's just the way this business works. You really don't want to be too good at this business or too smooth, maybe, is the word I'm looking for. But I'm going to try to get them on a Zoom if they live a thousand miles from me. But if they live around the corner, I'm back to showing presentations in person. Guys, I don't think there's anything that's going to beat us looking somebody eyeball to eyeball, us patting them on the back, us high-fiving them. There's nothing that beats that. We've got to go back to the future. We've got to start doing what built our businesses for years, guys. Now, again, I'm thankful for Zooms, and I'm happy we got Zooms, and I'm going to continue to use Zooms. But I'm telling you, if you can get to them, guys, we need to get to them. 
Now, just like Patrick teaches, I do it the same exact way. I'll, if they start asking me questions about getting on a Zoom, I'll say, listen, you know, I'm pretty new at this, but uh, that guy, Ryan, he, he and Megan, they're, they're going to explain all this stuff. I don't have all the answers, but they do. Can I put you down for 7 o'clock tomorrow night? Guys, we've got to get to showing the plan, and PBZs are great, but let's also start doing those Starbucks meetings and coffee shop meetings, and I know wherever Denny's Restaurant is in the Dallas area. I mean, you just got to get out there and start getting with people. I believe if we want to create the huge momentum that we're wanting, which we've got to do to make the money that I think we all want to make, we've got to get that mold going, and I think it's going to involve us getting back to the basics of us getting with people. Now... We're starting live meetings in Dallas, Fort Worth, and Houston, and I'm going to get them going everywhere. we got one starting in West Texas. We're starting to do live meetings once a week, guys. I mean, I think we've got to get back into that group. I'll say it again. I think we've got to get people together. I think in our DNA, we want to be with people. We want to have that camaraderie with people. We want to be part of a team. And it's hard to feel that when you're staring at some little inch-by-inch -inch box on a, on a computer screen, right? I mean, let's get real. I mean, I, we, we've got to get this thing going again. If we want to start filling up the American Airlines Arena and Air, American Airlines Center and all these big venues, we've got to get people understanding that this is a get-together kind of business. This is a business where you can feel it in the air. This is a business where, where the excitement just permeates everything. And you can't do that on a computer screen, guys. Now, let me say it again. I'm all for Zooms, and if somebody's way away from me, I'm doing a Zoom. I, I get that, but if it's at all possible, get a meeting going in your area. You know, I built my team. We started in one little back office in Garland, Texas. That's a suburb east of Dallas. And the whole organization, which turned into hundreds of thousands of people, came from that one little meeting. You just start somewhere, and it may only be five of you, but the next one will have seven of you. And then maybe the next one has 12 of you. And then it just kind of gets to go, and then somebody thinks, I can do that. So they start doing a meeting 100 miles away from you. Guys, we've got to get that momentum going, and I believe it's going to be with us doing weekly live meetings. I think that's, I don't think we can get around it. I mean, we've tried with Zooms and it, I mean, it's kept us going, but it has not thrived us like I think we all want it to. Yes or yes? I mean, we, we've got to get something going like that. Then every Saturday morning, my team, we do a, and I'm sure all the other leaders do, I'm not saying I'm special, we do a training every Saturday morning, 9 o'clock Central Time. And we get on there, and all of our new people and a lot of our newer people and some of our old people, they get on that training, and we go over the basics of this business. But I'm going to say this, guys. I got to say, I'm pumped. I know my father's death has left, left me to where I've not wanted to do business. I've not wanted to finish my book. And I am not, I, I went to therapy this last uh, Friday, and my therapist has helped me point out that I'm not in a good cycle. It's time to bring it back to where it ought to be. You, you never know. It can be through phone calls, you know. That's good for, for uh, network marketing. But I also think that social media is good, too. Okay, old school meets new, new school. And to tell you the truth, old school tactics can do well mixed with new school. And I agree with Presley. The home meetings, they've got to be done. Okay, regardless. No ifs, ands, or buts, no excuses, no exceptions. It, and, and those of you in the networking space. Now, if you're in the entrepreneurial venture, you need to be involved in, in aggressive marketing and recruiting people to join your teams. I, I believe that entrepreneurs can only succeed through systems and teams. And I'm just basically starting the seed of my belief in, in the ACN business. I have respect for men like Presley Swaggerty, for men like Randy Hedge. I'm going to tell you something. 
I firmly believe that it's up to us. It's up to us to go out there and make a difference. You never know. And that's a positive thing. Far too often, reactive culture wants to, you never know, come on with a negative, crinkled up nose situation. <laughs> and, and you know, I'm, I'm going to say this, and it's probably going to cause me to laugh, but at the same time, it's a serious moment, but please forgive me. I want to take old crinkled nose and put wrinkle cream up his nose. <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, well I gotta laugh for a little bit. Okay, I like talking about business, and it's up to us to be effective marketers and effective leaders. You know, I'm gonna use a quote by Theodore Roosevelt because I believe in it. I wish to preach not the doctrine of ignoble ease, but the doctrine of a strenuous life. The doctrine of discipline, labor, and heavy toil. What do you think of that? Why can't we do that? The sad thing is this, the entitlement deal. Some of the younger generations. I, I saw a social media ad yesterday. One of the younger generation guys like, I don't want to work. So I'm going to go for this entire thing. Grow up. Even the best of entrepreneurs have to work. It's the only way, it's the only way to make money. It's the only way to build wealth. See, a lot of the knowledge that I've gotten so far have been from men like Presley Swaggerty, Randy Hedge, and Robert Kiyosaki about how to build wealth. Asset and uh, asset acquisition and asset management. And I'm not talking about stocks. I'm not talking about crypto, gold and silver. The thing is, the good thing is this. You never know. So push yourself. Wrong, do it. But how bad do you want? to change your life for your future for yourself even for your family I waited so long to do this and I've always used excuses we gotta wave excuses bye bye we gotta wave excuses bye bye and get into the knowledge of God get yourself into the mindset of faith do that, please. Because you know what you've got in, in your hands once you've realized it as far as your business. But as far as finding the right contacts, you never know. So pound it. Hustle. Now, some entrepreneurs prefer talking about grinding. I prefer, because I believe in pat like Tony Robbins, I believe in patterns for the business. And patterns involve flow. They involve flow. Flowing. I much rather do that than, than, than grind. And that's just something that a Gen X cat like me believes in. But I've come to appreciate these ACN mentors that I've seen in Zoom calls and have had a chance to personally meet uh, Presley. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a couple of episodes. But it's a lot to chew in. You never know. You just never know. You have a chance to propel yourself to succeed, to say bye-bye excuses, bye-bye reactivity, bye-bye negative thoughts from the devil. I'm fighting on. I'm pursuing on. I'm going to make it. Oops.
I'm realizing what's going on. Based on some things in my personal life and in my circle, cir social circle, I'm realizing I need to change. I need to change. Because the times, they are changing. Heavenly Father wants me to remain happy here in Texas. And I think that he and I need to work together. But in order for me to be truly happy in Texas, I'm going to have to build this business. The, 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 the ACM business. And even if I get it started, my coaching business. Which I can't wait. One time, right. Empower your pattern. I'll find a way to get this started. One way or another. But guys, listen to me. You never know. You never know. I want to feel the uh, United Spirit, the United Supermarkets Arena in Lubbock. I want to feel the Wagner Noel in Odessa with my people for events. I want to do that for my coaching and for my ACM. I want to be a blessing and an impact in my life. I want to make a difference. And the next episode, let me tell you something. The next episode is one of the deep kernels in, in, um, pattern pathways. Okay? So be ready. Be ready to understand that in business success, the blessing is you never know. So, thrust in your sickle. Reap. Hustle. Flow. Hope you enjoy listening to Empower Your Pattern. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, become a part of Pattern Realm. This is Jimi Hendrix saying until next time, don't just sit there and take it. I want you to go build your dreams so you can take it. Do what others don't so you can be what others want. And do what others want so you can have what others can't. Please share this with Mama Son, Papa Son, and everyone. This is Jimmy Hendrix saying until next time. Choose, act, and pursue happiness. God bless you. And remember this from the bottom of my heart. Jimmy loves you. I really love you. God bless you. Have a blessed day.